going on, everybody? As you can see, I'm back in Iowa. I got a cozy fire going in the fireplace because it is three degrees outside right now, which seems pretty fitting then to be talking about cold weather cowboys in the American West, which you can use to create a historically accurate cowboy character that's dressed appropriately in the soaking rain, bitter cold, and driving snow of the Red Dead Online world. To find out exactly what these folks were wearing, I once again scoured the archives, contacted curators of various Western museums, and even spoke with rangers working at the Grant Coors Ranch National Historical Site, which was once the headquarters of a 10 million acre cattle empire in western Montana. The end result is one of the first comprehensive overviews of winter clothing in the West, particularly focused on cowboys. You asked, I delivered. Let's get started. We'll start with rainwear. Following the Civil War, most folks in the American West opted to keep themselves dry by using surplus gum rubber military ponchos, basically a rubberized blanket with a slit cut out of the middle. By 1881, however, a new waterproof option was created by a man named Abner J. Tower, who developed yellow oiled linen slickers called fish skins, saddle coats, or pommel slickers. Amongst cowboys of the West, these quickly replaced the old gum rubber ponchos, becoming the go-to waterproof option. Unlike the old gum rubber blanket ponchos, fish skins were cut in the shape of a duster coat, even having a long slit up the back so that the material would drape over the back and sides of the horse in order to fully protect the man in the saddle. These were also large enough to allow cowboys to sleep under them in rainy weather. Due to these advantages, most cowboys after 1881 would be seen with a rolled up yellow fish skin slicker behind a saddle, within easy reach when the weather demanded. In Red Dead Online, the yellow shotgun coat is a pretty historically accurate representation of a fish skin slicker. And as a bonus, it looks pretty damn good with any cowboy outfit. A highly recommend you keep one in your pack saddle for when it rains cats and dogs. In the fall, cowboys wore wool or canvas sack coats, black, gray, brown, or tan. Think of a sack coat as a slightly looser fitting blazer extending past the wearer's hips and resting around mid-thigh in length. Originally, these were meant to be buttoned up all the way, like a heavy woolen shirt. But sometimes these were worn with only the topmost button buttoned, and the hem spread to show off the waistcoat. For cowboys, this was likely utilitarian, as it was less restrictive in the saddle, and therefore more comfortable while working from horseback. But this style was also popular among town and city dwellers, likely because it allowed folks to show off their watch and chain. In Red Dead Online, there are a couple options that are close to the historical sack coat. I recommend the Everyman jacket, the Brakeman jacket, and the Antoine jacket. Again, you'll want these in black, gray, brown, or tan. In the winter months, cowboys had a couple different options. In warmer climates, some got by wearing their wool or canvas sack coats. When one needed a bit more warmth, they would choose surplus wool army great coats left over from the Civil War. Given their origin, it should be of little surprise that when it came to colors, they were usually dark or light blue. In Red Down Line, the Dunaway coat in dark blue is surprisingly accurate and looks pretty great. Now, it should be noted that while these wool great coats were adequate for cowboys or soldiers in the milder regions of the West, those on the central and northern plains dealt with significant significantly colder environments. Just to give you some idea of the temperature we're talking about, during the winter campaign against Crazy Horse conducted by General Nelson Miles in 1876-77, temperatures in Montana were recorded at 50 degrees below zero, or for all my European watchers, that's negative 45 and a half degrees Celsius. And that's cold. Concerned for the welfare of soldiers stationed in the freezing temperatures out west, Montgomery C. Meggs, Quartermaster General of the U.S. Army, conducted a survey over the serviceability and durability of the blanket line surplus wool greatcoats. As a result of the survey, it was determined that the coats provided insufficient protection from frontier weather. In their place, it was instead recommended that the Army issue buffalo coats, which would keep wearers significantly warmer. In response, Quartermaster Meggs issued buffalo coats to many soldiers on the western prairies starting in the winter of 1876. Regrettably, however, as you might know by watching my historical accuracy of buffalo hunting video, the buffalo were systematically annihilated within a couple years by buffalo hunters, the U.S. Army, Native Americans, and Western settlers. As a result, there was no longer a steady supply of buffalo robes, forcing the U.S. Army to switch to a blanket-lined, heavy canvas coat by 1879. Now, even though they were no longer issued to soldiers and most of the buffalo themselves were long gone, buffalo coats remained highly prized by all and continued to be worn by folks lucky enough to have them on the bone-chilling plains of the American West. This included not just soldiers, but also cowboys, trappers, miners, and town folk as well. Historically, these were large, heavy coats stretching all the way to the wearer's ankle and worn with the fur out. There appears to be two different popular versions made by manufacturers of the time, one that was double-breasted with five sets of large, black, hard rubber buttons, each closed with the twisted cord loop, and another that was single-breasted with cloth-covered wooden toggles rather than the round, hard rubber buttons. Inside, the double-breasted version had a lining 
lining of blue wool or brown wool, and the single breast ones had a quilted black cotton lining. Read that online, the brown or tan Marabay coat is a pretty fantastic representation of a traditional single breasted buffalo coat, even sporting the correct toggles. Now I know this is supposed to be bear fur, but it looks just like buffalo fur, so don't get hung up on that. The only other inaccuracy are the two pockets extending out of the front, which historically should be higher up on the coat, angled, and go to interior, not exterior pockets. But again, these small inaccuracies shouldn't deter you from using it. Now I love these coats, and I've been lobbying for their inclusion in the game for some time, so I'm just happy to have them. The other cold weather option popular among northern cowboys at the time was the sheep's wool jacket. While shorter in length and a bit less formidable against the cold, it was still a viable alternative to the warmer but bulkier buffalo coat. Red Dead Online is a solid example of this one with their sheep's wool jacket, which you want to pick up in brown or tan. Let's talk about hats. Now I must say that finding information about hats worn by cowboys in the winters of the late 1800s was much more difficult than I had expected. As most of my typical resources never discussed it, photos from the period were almost always taken in summer. As such, I reached out to the National Cowboy and Western Museum and was put in touch with Michael R. Grauer, the chair of cowboy culture and curator of cowboy collections. He informed me that most cowboys were from Texas originally, so initial responses to cold weather were to simply tie the brim down on the cowboy hat to act like ear flaps using the neckerchief or bandana. This was confirmed in my communication with Dan Shook, park ranger I consulted at Grant Coors Ranch National Historical Site in Western Montana, who added that some cowboys also used a bandana like a headband but angled it down over their ears and simply wore the cowboy hat over it. So if you're designing a cold weather southern cowboy, stick with a cowboy hat. Now if you're designing a cold weather northern cowboy, that is on the central and northern plains, you have a couple more options. While many still wore cowboy hats regardless of the weather, Michael Grauer mentioned that some cowboys were introduced to sheepskin lined wool caps with ear flaps by Eastern European and Scandinavian immigrants, which unsurprisingly was a much better solution during the Sub-Zero winters. These were very similar to the regulation model 1879 U.S. Army winter muskrat fur hats, which were issued to soldiers on the frozen prairies of the West. These were lined in red wool and like the sheepskin lined wool hats introduced by immigrants, sported black tie strings connected to the ear flaps, which could be lowered to fully cover the ears of the wearer. The big difference, however, was that these muskrat hats had the fur facing out and the wool in, while the immigrant hat was opposite. The Red Dead Online, there's regrettably no accurate representation of the immigrant hat currently available in the Wheeler and Rossin catalog. Still, the brown Sobel hat is spot on for the muskrat hat. All that said, the arrangement looks a bit strange to me with anything other than the buffalo coat. Now you folks do what you want, I'm gonna keep rocking the cowboy hat and just pretend like I put a bandana over my ears. Year-round, most cowboys wore leather gloves, a practical accessory that protected them from barbed wire while installing fencing, rope burns while working with cattle, and blisters from manual labor. While the leather gloves gave a measure of warmth in cold weather, cowboys at the central and northern plains would often transition to wool or fur mittens in sub-zero temperatures, which provided better insulation for the hand as the fingers could share body heat. To retain dexterity, two slits were cut on the inside of the mittens, allowing the wearer to use his thumb and index finger when necessary. In the harshest environments, buffalo fur gloves were the best available option, evident by the fact that they were issued by the army along with buffalo coats and muskrat hats. In Red Dead Online, there are several types of leather gloves that suffice historically. However, at the time of making this video, there are no mittens. There is evidence that some cowboys wore wool scarves in the winter, which could be utilized in much the same way as the traditional bandana, just significantly warmer, larger, heavier, and more cumbersome. In Red Dead Online, there's a wool neck scarf, but it appears to be far too thin, so it doesn't really look the way you'd want it. Same with the inglet scarf, which looks like you're on your way to a luau. Instead, I suggest you go with the gathered bandana. In concluding this video, I thought I'd give you some good examples of some cold weather cowboy outfits. Here we have a rainy weather cowboy based on the southern range cowboy outfit we created on the how to create historically accurate cowboy character video. This consists of the worn ropers boots and the brown Alvarado chaps. And by the way, you can just put whatever pants underneath these you prefer. Up top, we've got the Navy Frontiersman shirt paired with the red neckerchief. Over that, we had the yellow shotgun coat as our fish skin slicker and crown our heads with the tan military scout hat. If you already have a historical cowboy created, just add the fish skin and you're good to go. 
Next, we'll look at a fall cowboy, which, with small variations, could apply to cowboys in either range during the spring and fall seasons, or even for winter cowboys on the southern plains. To keep things simple, we'll start with a southern fall version. For this, we kept everything the same below the waist with the rainy weather cowboy. Up top, we've got the collar overshirt, tan traditional vest, and a red gathered bandana. Over that, we placed the tan Antoine jacket and a matching military scout hat. To convert this to a northern fall cowboy, just swap out the Alvarado chaps and military scout hat with the Heathland chaps and Liberty hat. At that point, you can change out jackets, vests, and shirts to your liking while still remaining historically accurate. To create a winter cowboy, you'll start with the southern or northern fall cowboy we just made. For southern winter cowboy, you just continue to use the sack coat or you can upgrade to the Dunaway coat in dark blue. For a northern one, start with the northern fall template but swap in the sheep's wool jacket or go all out with the fur mare bay coat. To create a blizzard-proof northern winter cowboy, just add the brown sobel hat. Now that you folks know how to make your own cold weather cowboy, get on out there, stay toasty, keep looking historically accurate, and I'll see you out on the snowy trails. Thank you folks for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure that you like and you subscribe. And if you want to further support my efforts, you can do so on Patreon or you can visit the Man vs. History Outfitter shop where you can get all your gear for the modern frontier and support the channel in the process. Thank you folks for watching. Please have a wonderful night. We'll see you next time. Before I go, I just got to make sure that I thank my Patreon patrons. So, thank you to my gold tier patrons, Tyler Bioshock Rodriguez, Ashley Gertensen, The Innocents, Hurtin' Wade, Manverse Moves, Bryce Feed, Cyber, Chasing Victory, Teddy Bad Boy, Rich Christensen, Comrade Krieger, Dawson E, Song Breezes, Noah Ovens, David Perkins, Sticky Ninja, Noah 5943, John Goley, Jigsaw, The Red Baron, Yinzian, and Arjun Bach. Also got to make sure that I thank my bronze and silver tier Patreon patrons. Thank you all for all your support and all that you do. Let's keep growing. Let's keep building. We'll see you guys next time.